that's normal what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and pick up on a few things those of you who did the base part well done by the way um, getting base part working is a bit problematic is a bit annoying and cannot often be straightforward um, what I wanted to do is just go through what um, step 9 is because a lot I know a lot have gone through it and gone this isn't really clear about what you mean by that so let me just pull it up so step 9 I presume oh wow I just realized step 9 isn't what I thought it was there, there is two things that I'm going to show them um, this is your key, your key halved mouse now with step 9 I'll go back to that in a second because again I didn't realize that that's the one you were talking about that's my that's my fault apologies uh, one of the most common ones I get is getting that intersection marker here now if you remember in the notes I asked you to make sure that you had a central point here on there so if I click on sketch and then what I do is I press control select this line and select this line what it will do is I can do I can do my typicals I can um, convert the entities and so forth or if I go on point it will give me oh the swine it's not hang on a second I might oh it's because I'm not in sketch let me do that again sketch there we go so I go this line and this line oh this line <laughs> come on there we go and that line and that line and then point there you go that was my fault I was in um, I wasn't in a sketch so what it actually does is it will take this line and this line and actually give me a point trajectory of where that actually sits which you should see there um, this is a really really useful tool if you need to know the center point of a curve relative to two particular lines great really useful bit of kit um, oh I've just had a question on using SolidWorks on a Mac wow that's really concerning mate it just shows me that you weren't reading any any feeds that I've put out yes this was resolved last week now you the uh, horizon software is now live um, you can install Horizon and you can run Horizon and what I've had confirmed is on Horizon on Horizon um, you will find ANSYS you will find uh, SolidWorks and then you will find COMSOL on there um, ANSYS, your typical FEA, and SOLIDWORKS is what we're doing for here. And you'll also, I'm told, you'll also find Inventor on there as well. Um, when it comes to MATLAB, for those who need in MATLAB for my module, um, I've produced a, an, an introduction of how to install that for uh, the bare minimum. We found that MATLAB is very, very meticulous about how they um, how they're set up. So I've got another question, one second. The pin dimension, oh, I'll check that one. I'll check that one. We're talking of these pin dimensions. I thought so. So um, let's have a look at my pins. What I've got on here. Is there a? Uh, let's have a look at what it says on the notes. I just want to see whereabouts on the notes it's talking about the pins. Ah, oh, right. 
right, yes, I see your point. So we have a two millimeter extrusion, but did I ask for two? I did ask for a two millimeter long boss extrusion with a two millimeter draft. What did I actually go with then on them? Yeah, I have gone two millimeter extrusion with a two millimeter draft, as you can see. I'm, um, I'll upload these models as well so you can see for yourself. Right. Um, so, the other thing was was um, drafting for step nine. I'm going to quickly t show you this because I actually want to move on to what um, today is really about. So, when it comes to split lines, um, for those of you who don't know, when it comes to split lines, if I click on here and then. Uh, when it comes to a split line, a split line system, it's quite cool really. If you can actually pass all the way through a geometric uh, structure or anything like that, this split line, you connect them to each side just through a coincidence. And what the split line will do is if I right click on there and then click on, obviously you select the sketch that you're using as a cutter and then you select all the faces to create the target. Once you've selected all them, what we're aiming to do is draft it now these drafts how they work is you gotta think it's a pull direction so as I said I'm gonna upload this for something for you to take a look at yourself now my parting lines in this case are my lines that I've created through my split the pull direction in this because I wanted to draft upwards um, is obviously the top face and then uh, the pull direction oh yeah the pull direction is here the parting line faces will obviously come into, come into play because I'm actually selecting here. I'm going for a six millimeter draft and that is what gives me my direction of my draft. And then all I'm doing is recreating the same thing but beneath to create that. And then I've just simply filleted everything like that. But what I'll do is just for your knowledge, whoever's, whoever's had a crack at this, I will upload it. I do have two. I have one which is solid solid structure and the other one which is surface. So I'm going to upload the surface if you don't mind because I presume a lot of you have been doing the surface method which uh, is best. So um, there were just a couple of bits uh, which I'm not sure for those of you who didn't who've, who've done it they were key things that I was hoping that you'd, you'd notice with it. So um, today's session what I'm going to do is just call up the notes. You can have a, have a look. So not there, not there. So I'm going to go here onto week three. And this is one for your little joy, for a little joy and excitement. This is using guide curves. Now I've kept this one because this was a tutorial that I did when I was on the course and it was written by my lecturer and uh, it's a great bit. It's a great tutorial. It really introduces you to complex profiles. If anybody wants to know about the Shelley Cole Marathon car, when T Tony put that car together, Ewan Baldry, he, uh, not Ewan, um, Joel Allison, he did the first concept designs of the uh, Shelley Cole Marathon car and he actually used this method to do it. Now this is just me making a shape up and it's a lot of fun just doing these shapes. In a real uh, manufacturing environment, you would have key points a point that you're operating around and you'll notice here that all I've done is I've tried to show you what you're making yeah I thought you might have done that's why I've, I've mentioned about it and uh, but me and Joel because not everybody will know but uh, me and Joel were in the same class together we're, we were in uni together and the guy who wrote this tutorial is what inspired Joel on the design process of that um, Shell Eco Marathon car I mean, you could argue that he'd, he'd already used that experience, but um, sorry, somebody just sent me a really silly message. Uh, <laughs> you could argue that he'd been using experience from uh, from things he'd, he'd gathered in industry, but the thing is, is this is a really key way of producing really complex profiles. So I'm going to actually leave this one for you guys to have a play with. Um, we are going to focus more though today on lofting. And I know what a lot of you will think, 
back and loft, what you're talking about, dead easy. It is dead easy. However, what I want to do today is show you some key things about systems, about basically about Dissault systems. I'm not here to to like take the mick out of Dissault or try to say that they're crap because they're not. This is a problem that Dissault have faced, that Autodesk face, and it's the amazingness of a curve. So we are going to start off dead basic, dead straightforward, no complication. We're going to start off looking to generate this profile. And the reason I'm doing this is it just gets you used to trimming, gets you used to that process. I'm going to work through this um, just because I appreciate not everybody's uh, CAD savvy. Those of you who are CAD savvy, please fire away. Um, I, I prefer those of you who are very strong to get on with this and get this done because I want to see who makes the mistake. Uh, yes, there is a massive, huge, gigantic mistake in this and I leave it here because it actually really makes you see what's going to go wrong in your assignment, what's not going to work out and how can you actually approach it to try and fix these problems. It's a huge gaping problem, massive problem. But um, what I'm going to do is start off dead steady. So again, if you are CAD savvy, you are more than welcome to fire away. But for me, I'm going to go dead steady, dead slow, and just look at this basic, what I call the basic lofting. Don't want to spend a massive lot of time on it because it's not the most complicated bit of geometry. But as ever, I'm going to bring in a right, right plane, and you can see the geometry there. It's not the most complicated. So I'm going to quickly just lash that all together so I'm going to simply go there to there to there to there to there <laughs> I love making it really exaggeratedly wrong because it irritates everybody <laughs> um, an important thing about this is if you look on here you can see the datum actually sits in the midpoint of the line so let's use these things to our advantage let's not reinvent the wheel no point so I'm going to press control I'm going to select the datum, I'm going to select the back line, come over to here and it says, do you want to add a midpoint? Yes, I do. Then, let's just stick on the dimensions. So, I'm, again, I'm not going to mess around long with this, so I'm going to go 40 millimeters. Then I'm going to go 50 millimeters. Then I'm going to go Ooh, oh yeah, because I'm on midpoint. Oh, that was awkward. And I'm going to go point to back of 12.5. Then I have a fixed angle, whoops, fixed angle between there and there, and that is going to be 9.5. And just so it looks like the, the, the notes. And that's it. So we have our geometry. Again, not the most complicated. It just allows us to um, get moving pretty pretty nicely, really. So um, we're gonna we're gonna extrude this geometry uh, 100 millimeters. I had to check myself then. Now I'm moving away from features, I'm going to surfaces. So I'm going to extrude and I'm going 100 mil. Do not cap the ends so I'm gonna from there and I'm just gonna quickly rename that main body then what I'm gonna do is cap this side with a planar surface uh, left, whoa, whoa, that nearly went wrong. Call it side end one. Just thinking about me. Yeah, so there. Then I'm going to repeat the same thing again, cap the end on there, and then we're going to go side end L. Then from there, I'm going to select there to there, just stick them in their own little folder. We'll just call that main body. Oh, that was awkward. Let me just put that back on. Just call that 
MB. Stops being whingy. Right, so we've now got our initial geometry in position. So, um, all I'm doing here is a corner rectangle. That's it, nothing more. Um, there's some key things about it though that I really want to show you. There's some nice techniques that I'm going to show you in these next two sketches. Use these to your advantage. Don't use these, it's entirely up to you. So I'll go sketch and sketch. Control and eight which is a shortcut to normal to view. I'm going to use a corner rectangle. Oh, whoop. <laughs> Let me just put that in the middle like this. Corner rectangle like that. Uh, answer, have I done the notes for Inventor yet? I haven't. I haven't. Um, I'm still I'm massively behind actually producing the written notes. I've, I've worked the examples to make sure they're going to work. I've made sure that everything's going to show as it should. Um, but I've not yet is my best answer. Um, but I will be producing that video probably live. To, well, not probably. I will be producing it live tomorrow. Not the best answer for you at the minute, I appreciate, but um, that's where I'm up to. So, uh, 6.5, again, just pulling these, pulling these values straight from the notes, and then going there to there, and then making that 20 mil. Uh, we have a length, 87. And that is our set of, that is our set of uh, dimensions for this drawing. So I'll come out there and that's what you should have. Nothing nothing serious, nothing like uh, difficult. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a plane uh, 45 millimeters above this um, step as I've been calling it, 45 millimeters and click apply. So that is what you'll end up with. Um, I'm not naming that yet because I'm going to name the uh, feature once it's together. So I'm going to sketch and sketch, control and A. Right, now um, this is just a learning curve for anybody who um, has ever been unsure about uh, using things to your advantage. Symmetry. Symmetry. If you can use symmetry to your advantage, use symmetry to your advantage. Get the benefits of the tools that are there. So I'm going to go centre line. I'm going to track it to this point there and then over to there and come out of that and then repeat the same thing again to there and then over to there and then I'm going to go corner rectangle just like that make sure that it doesn't automatically track onto one of these lines because you see the yellow constraint that's been put on what that's essentially doing is saying I can do that you don't want that don't want that so what I'm going to do is I am going to make these symmetrical about the center lines so I'm going to press control, select my left uh, vertical, select my center vertical, and select my right vertical. I'm going to make it, make it symmetric. Do the same thing again, press control, select my upper horizontal, my center horizontal, and my lower horizontal, and make it symmetric. So now what we should be able to do is do this, or this, ah, now it's because I'm in this fixed bloody, right, so let me just, um, put a dimension on and what I'm going to do is go 10.5 then what I'm going to do is put another dimension on there and make it 48.8 so you just take the benefits of symmetry that's purely all I've done there and it allows me to um, have control with just two dimensions having control with just two dimensions is golden really really is golden so useful because then I can re relate that to my design tables, I can relate that to API programming, whatever I want, but it minimizes the possibilities of things going wrong because everything is related, because these center lines are related to the lower geometry. So, it, it, I mean, you could use equation if you wish, where equation can become proportionally calculated based on the actual base of that step. Loads of things you can do with it, but it's great, it really is. So again, um, what I'm gonna do is just uh, hide that. Well, cut, I'm just gonna rename that plane actually because, so I'll call that plane uh, top point. 
whatever top face um, and what I'm going to do now is go features uh, surfaces sorry I'm going to go loft choose my corner point for my loft and then choose my upper point for my loft and that's what you'll get now what um, these systems are great for is being able to have being able to control the relationship between that let me just zoom it in a little bit between that flat face and the angle in which it moves from now if I do a normal so if I go starting start constraint I can do I can do a direct vector where I can define so if I go direct vector I can say where it's going to move to and the degree offset that it can draft from or I can do normal to profile where what it will do is it will take it and try to keep the perpendicular behavior from it but then flow from there to here this is a really really cool way of being able to um, do things like manifolds manifolds in this case are quite good if you need that perpendicular relationship between a flat face to the other you can control that and it will still not compromise in that flow between the two I can add further start length angles I can actually extend this outwards or I can shorten it down I mean it's obviously it's zero at the minute but um, I can add further to it I can control that angle so if I go really over the top I can get it to flow in such a way but in this case I'm just going to keep that at zero and then now what I want to do is do the same thing beneath so if I go beneath and then go normal to profile and what we've got is this really nice flow between the two again you can control this if you needed I don't know if I always relate to manifolds because I've seen manifolds done in this case so many times and it's really useful so if I now confirm that right so I'm gonna hide my top point and this I'll call uh, flow body we are going to add things to this there's going to be key features about this that we need to add to now um, I'm just going to trim this in half uh, section this in half I should say not trim it so I'm going to section it in half if you take a look at the sections in half as you'd imagine we've got this beneath but if we look Oh, let me just get this maneuvered right there we go if you look beneath you can actually see um, a blue line that's going on well a line that's going on the inside that is the relationship from where the drawing has come from onto this body so we've got that intersection we've got that behavior so what we're going to do is trim this inside out because always say to yourself in a surface model if you cannot see it then it should not be there so in this case once there is a lid on there you won't see that so what I'm going to do is go trim I'm going to select this body with mutual and in fact let's we did mutual the other way let's just do another one let's do trim let's do standard so with standard I can select the la a key behavior where it interacts and what it will do is it will presume that my key behavior that I've selected it will cut whatever's in its path so if I select this this is my last thing we've got remove uh, sections uh, we've got keep or remove now I'm going to remove in this case so if I highlight you'll see there that it's in in between it now I can chop the whole goddamn thing out I'm actually not going to what I'm wanting to do is chop the inside out so now if I click OK what I get now is a relationship between it now you'll notice I've still not uh, knitted them together just because it's a basic geometry and I should at this level now um, I should be getting relatively close to knitting you don't want to leave too many surfaces open so you look here I've got lots of surfaces that are open um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to call this uh, internal trim remove So it will just remind me of what that actually was. 
And then, finally, what I'm gonna do is put a planar surface on the top, knit the whole thing together, and then we're in a good, solid, oh, hey, almost made a mistake. So I'm gonna go plane, there, there. Planar surface, I should say, there. And C's. Now the planar surface, think of it as a plane. And all it can do is attack the, um, the, the correct angles that would allow you to create a plane. If you have a curve, it's not gonna work. You need to use a different way. So just keep that in mind. It creates a plane surface, a flat plane surface. Right, so we've now got the whole geometry in one place like that. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna knit these together. So I'm gonna go knit surface. I'm gonna choose my end plate. I'm gonna choose my main body. I'm gonna choose my extrusion. I'm gonna choose my, and I'm gonna choose that now. Um, if I click just merge entities, just for the minute, just realize I've left these open as well. I want to, I want to rename that. So I'm just gonna call that, uh, end point. And I'm probably just gonna, Put them into a folder. It just keeps it nice and tidy. Call this. Um, uh, ah, it's already got a name, so I'll call this uh, FB for floor body. Right, so what have we got? If I now uh, trim that into, I mean, if I section that, we're now in a, in a position where this is an entirely closed surface. We know that there's been no errors because I merged the entities. There is no more blue lines anywhere apart from where I've just done a section view. So we know that this now could be carbon fiber if we wanted. It could be fiberglass, Kevlar, or it could be, if I go to edit my surface and then go to create a solid, it could be a solid if I wanted. Now I'm in a, in, in, in a solid position. <laughs> Now I'm in a, um, a good position to be able to choose which way this goes. Um, it doesn't have to be in one way, it doesn't have to be any particular way. What we now can do is do both. So um, I'll just rename that. Um, I'm just gonna call that final to be honest. Just then, when it comes into the solid bodies, down to the final knit. At least I know what I'm looking at. Um, yeah, so now in a, in, in a very good position. Now, in your assignment, I'll be looking for that aspect. This is an aspect I will be looking for. I'm in a surface and in a solid. So that ability to be able to jump backwards and forwards. I'm gonna save this, because that's just, a, a, just to show you what we've done. We've gone through this, we've gone through that, now I'm, I'm gonna take my time with this. Now for those of you who've raised a head, again, well done. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take my time with this because there is some very key elements of the learning side of this. Um, it's not the hardest thing to put together, but, the, hard, but the, the key thing about this is we've seen what a normal tube profile will allow you to do. We've also seen the process of creating a surface and we're also, we're also now in a position with this geometry where we can move from solid to surface in the flick of a button. Um, and I am purely in control of everything that's going on. Now I've, I've seen people who will take this to the knit, so it's in a solid, and then when they use base part, they actually transform this into base part as a solid. So if I minimize that, and then I can just operate a surface um, but if I transport that across, it will be transported as a solid. And the reason they do that is they can look at the manufacturing side of what needs to be done, or they can run FEA based on it. If they are running it as um, as a, uh, a composite, uh, Kevlar, or anything like that, what you can do is just export it as a surface, but you're able to do that. As a solid structure, it's very tricky. The process of it is very tricky. You can do zero offsets 
from there so um, you can do offset surface from there but often what you'll find is when you offset it they don't uh, merge together correctly they never seem to hit correctly the ability to be able to understand how uh, surfaces move is quite tricky so something like this you could easily convert to a surface however something like um, bodywork from a car trying to do an offset from that as a zero is tricky and getting it to merge correctly it needs a lot of repairing so if you go about it as modeling it as a surface you're in an extremely much higher position of control of that part rather than going solid to surface <coughs> Right, so I'm going to save that as bas basic lofting. Again, I'll upload this to Teams once I'm done. So I'll save that as basic lofting. Um, these are techniques I 100% recommend you try now. Getting used to doing it, getting used to how this thing functions. Um, what's going to be really interesting for those of you who've been following me between SolidWorks and Inventor, wait till you see how Inventor deals with, with some of these uh, curves. These curves, are, it's very, very neck and neck when it comes to um, uh, Autodesk method for dealing with curves. It's very, very neck and neck, very impressive, I should say. Right, so I'm going to close that. And I'm going to move now, and I want to move steady on this because there is a lot of key things to learn about this. So I'm going to do just a fresh part from start. And I do it like I can visualize it. So this is, um, I'll just zoom down to the bottom and show you what this is. This is the part that we're making. Um, I call this the manifold brace. Uh, it's not a manifold, it's just something that we made up. And um, it is... It, it's got some key things about it when it comes to surfacing and it's got some key things which I'm, I'm going to show you now so I'm going to go on to top plane and I'm going to go sketch and sketch from here I'm going to do my center lines I'm going to do a vertical line make sure my yellow vertical marker is on and then I'm going to do three more lines here and here. I'm going to concentrate on this length first so I'm going to go smart dimension go U, make U 130. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control select this line and this line. I'm going to make them equal. I'm going to press control select this line and this line. I'm going to make them equal and now all I need to do is go now don't get these two mixed up if you get these two mixed up you're gonna hit even more problems so this side I'm going 120 and this side I'm going 100 degrees that is this is our net um, um, path of where our lofts are going to move be between. Now what we did in the last bit was just lofts between two profiles that were the same. However, what if you're lofting between two profiles that are not the same, what does it do? Now I know um, those of you who have done a lot of CAD, you're going to see, uh, you, you get the loft and it naturally predicts the key points of where it starts and finishes. However, what if then key points are interfering with your design? What do you do? How do you fix it? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through some processes of that you can do. So I'm gonna click OK. Right, so now, um, this tool now is one of my favorites. It's been around for ages and it's amazing because it doesn't just work on lines, it works on splines, curves, anything with a perpendicular endpoint to it. So I'm gonna go reference geometry, I'm gonna go plane, and I'm gonna go line, point, as my first plane. I'm gonna repeat that again, I'm gonna go line, I'm gonna go plane, sorry, I'm gonna go line, then point. Ah, see how it's called that in there, so apologies, let me just get rid of that. I'm gonna go plane, line, then point, Go plane, line, 
10 point. Oh, my awkwardness. Line, then point. And what I'll do is I'm going to call this uh, the uh, path. Center. Plane one, plane two, plane three for this will be fine. So what I'm going to do is just call this. Well, not yet. I'm going to add something else in there. Yeah. So if I flip this up, that's what you should get. Well, if you've done these planes differently, it doesn't matter. What's important is that there are planes which are perpendicular or acting on each end. Right. So the next bit. What we need now is um, some tangent arcs which lead from here to here and here to here. So there's two ways of doing it. You, I've gone about it the long way around in the nodes. There are two ways. So what I'm going to do is go line. I'm going to go to top plane and sketch. Apologies. Press Control and eight, and I'm going to go three point arc. U to U. Now most students tend to go berserk with this. Don't go berserk. Only need two, end up with one here, and then I'll end up with one over here, and then one over here. And you go, no, 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 just two. Two will do it. Thank you. So I'm going to press control, select the arc, select the line, tangent. If you want to put one on the other side, you're welcome to it, just for completion. I think that should have a dippy fit. Oh, no, apparently not. I only need one. So I'm going to press control, select the line, select three point arc, and I'm going to go tangent. Right, now in the notes, the reason I did this is when you come to the end of this, what it will do is it will switch it off, but you can share the sketch. So for this, I'm going to share the sketch, it just makes life easier. But that's what I'm going to do. So um, I'm going to come out of there and I'm just going to call these, I'm going to call the sketch tan arcs. And I'm going to bring all these together and just call them um, well, whatever. Right. So we've now got all this in. We're now in a in a, in, um, a nice state to get started. So the first thing is we need some geometry on our first plane, which is a circle of. Let me just double check. 135 millimeter diameter. So I'm going to sketch, do a circle, bring it from the center, and then just draw it out, put a dimension on there, and give it 135, 135. Bring that in like that. And then what I'm going to do is control and eight to snap that to a normal to view. And I'm going to do a line which comes from the corner quadrant, which moves right across to the other side. And then I'm going to go trim and trim that lower one out. Oh, I'll use power trim, press control, there you go. And that's our first geometry. Um, I like to stay with the notes just because I don't like to move into areas where you go, whoa, hang on a minute, I can't track where you are. So I'm gonna go to plane two, which if anybody's unsure, this is the plane to the right side of everything else. Press control and eight. And now what I'm going to do is a corner rectangle. Now I do this just to help me just visualize exactly where things are going. So I'm going to do a corner rectangle there and I'm going to go press control, select the bottom horizontal line, select the datum and I'm going to make a midpoint on that. Then I'm going to go 45 by 75. So I'm going to go 45 millimeters, 45 millimeters. Then I'm going to go 75 millimeters. Oh, that's the wrong way around. 45, and then I'm gonna go 75. That should be 75, so apologies. So I go 75, and then that brings the geometry in here. Again, this process, dead straightforward. There's no biggie with that at all. I'm gonna put this one on here, and then what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna hide these planes. Oh, thinking about it, no I'm not, not yet. There's a few things we need to do yet. Um, 
this plain one I won't hide, I'll be plain in hiding these two. The last thing is I want an ellipse. Now if I remember right, let me just check, 35 by 100, so I'm going to go sketch on here, control and 8. I'm going to go to my circles, choose an ellipse, I'm going to come onto here and then just draw an ellipse shape. Um, I'm making it flat to everything else, so again I'm just drawing a quadrant, quadrant marker and I'm going to trim with my power trim, press control and I'm just going to drag it across like that. Last thing is from here to here I want this to be uh, 35 millimeters and then this length is going to be 100 and just for completion uh, can I move that? No I can't which is good because it was snapped into the quadrants. I just wanted to make sure even though it was black I just wanted to make sure that, that was snapping correctly and it is. Right so now I'm not going to be revisiting these two planes so I'm going to right click on there I'm going to hide it and I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to hide it just because as you're going through with planes you can end up with millions of these planes everywhere and you go I'm not sure what the hell I'm looking at so what I'll do is just call that circle I'm going to call this uh, rectangle come on Come on, you swine. Let's call it Reg. And I'm call this Ellipse. So I've got key marking geometries there, which is fine. So um, now what I'll do is I want to start bringing these together. The first one, dead easy. Dead, dead easy. Um, this sketch now, by the way, is irrelevant. So what I'm going to do is just hide my paths. So I'm going to right click and hide that. Oh, wrong one, apologies. It's actually that one I want to hide. So I'm going to hide that. These are the key ones now. So I'm going to go surfaces, loft, that sketch to that sketch. And I'm going to use guide curve. This is my guide curve. And you go, okay, yeah, dead straightforward, agreed. Um, you'll notice here it's selected both so I'm just gonna get rid of that for a second now have you ever wanted to just use one sketch to allow you to minimize all the, the hassle that you can have you can end up having to draw millions and millions of sketches so if I right click and then go to selection manager I can choose a close profile I can choose a looping profile I can choose as groups so if I just leave it on groups and select that and then click OK what it does now is it just picks up on that line that as a tool is very useful I mean again this is just a center line but you may be in a position where you need to be able to use these a lot more in different areas and just having that tool is so useful if you're doing um, uh, multiple profiles things like that where you can just pull out from one sketch if you've got hundreds of lines, you can pull out one thing and it's so useful. So I'm gonna click OK on that. Um, if yours has vanished, which it very well might have done. Uh, there. Now I leave, I leave mine to not automatically hide. It's just because it can be frustrating. If yours has vanished, right click on it and make sure it's on show so I'll show you what might have happened so if that's happened and you go damn it where's it gone so if I right click and then go show that's what we get which is good now this is where um, this can result students to getting very angry with me um, I do I do totally get it but um, you need to understand some things about what we're looking at so as I've been trying to elaborate curves so if I come to my uh, from uh, let me go whoops not that if I go right plane right now you look here everything looks fine don't seem to be a problem don't don't know what he's whinging about everything looks great 
do not use convert entity if you're if anybody's on this step here do not use convert entity converting entities does not work for it because you're actually taking a secondary point in space from um, the original now uh, the best way to do this is what I'm going to do is come here and I'm just going to hide that completely hide that out now when it comes to my circle I'm going to turn my circle back on show that show that bad boy now what I'll do is I'll go onto my plane I'm going to go sketch and sketch what I want to do is I want to use that profile to convert my entities so I'm going to go just give me that and that just so I'm complete and then click OK right now we're in a good space to actually do things so I'm going to right click and hide that so now any changes that I make it won't be affected by what I'm doing so I'm going to control and aim. In fact, don't follow me on this. I want to show you something. Do not follow me doing this um, because this is wrong, what I'm going to show you, but I want to show you something which is key about why we're doing this. Because I, I'm just though, I'm not really explaining to you guys exactly why we're doing this. So if I go there and there, and you go, oh, oh, oh. Um, okay, let me go there. Oh, oh, that, that looks that looks better. You go, oh yeah, okay. You go, oh, does it? Right. So, let's say, for argument's sake, that the flow from this circle moving towards a corner rectangle, this angle is going to be problematic to your design. Let's say you're working on a bonnet. I, I always say this with manifolds. I'm obsessed with them for this, this example. Let's say that this will interfere with a key component as you're closing the bonnet. Let's say um, you need that tenth of a mil more for um, any type of turbos, anything like that of what you're trying to do. At this point now, you are screwed. There is nothing you can do to be able to control between that flow to that flow them lines have been predefined by the software it's a pain it's a pain they call it the leading angle these leading angles are a pain in the backside however if you're in that position there is more we can do so I'm now looking at my converted sketch that I did because I'm not happy with that angle flow between the two uh, points so if I come onto that come onto that arc and I right click as I right click now, you look on, you go, okay, oh, excuse me. You go, right, okay, so what am I looking for? So you come down, you, if I go to sketch tools, you go, oh my good God. However, look here, split entities. We have a three point arc here. Now what the system is saying is, because you've only got two key profiles, so a three point arc and a line, which corresponds to four lines working together. What it will do is do the best. It'll do its best to try and get them flaws between it. But what if that is not an option? What I've got to do is convert this into that profile. I've got to give it four profiles. So I'm going to right click, go to sketch tools, and I'm going to split entities. Now it literally says is where you want to split it. Now there's no measurement for this at the minute. This is just splitting wherever. So I want to split it there, and I'm going to split it there. And then you come away and go, okay, cool. So I've got these two points now that are split. Now if I look, I've now got four profiles. I've got a way of controlling the flow of this point to this point. This it puts me in a very powerful position. So I'm going to go smart dimension. And I want to control the length of this. So I'm going to go cone point. First split point, length. And I'm going to change that to 35. The only reason I'm pausing there is I just want everybody to stay uh, caught up with me on that. So again, I'm going to go corner point, split point, arc. Turn that to 35. So now what we're in is a very good position. We've now got a stay space. We've got a space now where we can operate 
Um, I should point out, anybody who's getting the bad signal, um, apologies for that. Yes, this is recorded. This is the reason why I'm recording it, because um, if the signal goes a bit bad, it means the recording will still be a solid signal as well. So if you are worried that the, it's not recorded, it is recorded. And um, the question, the, the point that you're actually asking me if this records is recorded, is telling me that you've never actually looked at the notes because I've recorded the past few weeks. Uh, <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is come out. Okay. Um, Right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come out of there now, and I'm now gonna to move towards my uh, proper loft. So as I come out, put it into position, and now I'm gonna hide that. I'm gonna loft. This point to this point. Now you see there, uh, I'll just bring my guide curves in. Right click, selection manager, bring that curve in. Okay. Now you look, I've now controlled that flow across it. Minimize the flow between the two. If I wanted, I could try and um, keep that more up to a 45. Um, I could control which way it wants to go, but it puts me in a very, very um, comfortable position to be able to choose how it's going to work. So I'm going to hide that. And now I'm just going to bring the second loft back in. And what I'd like to do is just uh, rename these lofts. So I'm going to go uh, circ to and then I will go circ to Just to give me rough guidance as to where everything's going, so at least I can track it then and be sure about where I'm where um, I'm moving with it. So, the next thing with this is, and this is the key point. Just before I move on, as anybody, I don't need a full explanation, but as anybody um, move, as anybody move forward, has anybody done this bit already? I'm just interested to know if anybody's hit the errors yet okay that's fine oh now that is a challenge Harry did you follow the notes perfectly the last question I have for you has your part thickened Cool, right, so this is pretty good. Um, I'll, I'll elaborate as to what I'm talking about. I'm not just gonna go, ha ha, it's not worked. Um, this is where we are. So if you look down here, now if you notice here, I've said go right, then left, then left for trimming. Now this is, this, I've not just done this for no reason. So what I'll do is I'm gonna first go to my trim, gonna go to trim, now, those of you who are can it will know that I didn't really need to put this base in there. I didn't need to put this base in there. I just wanted to add to really heighten the problem of what we're gonna face. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go standard. I'm gonna go left and right. Just make sure I've gone the right one, yep. And then I'm gonna, wow, that's blue. And then I'm gonna go to remove sections. Click on remove sections. And I'm gonna go left. I'm gonna do the same again, trim here and here. Remove section here and then okay. Look at that. Um, I'm gonna have to 
move very slowly into this. Look at that. Oh, that's a nightmare. Look at all these. These are called needle surfaces. Well, they're nicknamed needle surfaces. Frustrating thing is this needle surface, every time you try and select it, it won't allow you to select it because it's inside of the geometric database. If I try to go to thicken that, the system will have a meltdown and go, no, sorry, not plausible. If you look underneath here, look at that. There's, they're everywhere. Oh, it's a nightmare. They're all a bit crap. They've not worked out correctly. These are problematic issues. Now, the issue that we have is, I'll just put, I'm just gonna show you what I mean. It's just easier on a sketch. So if I just go on the top of here, now, if you think of a geometric database, now the geometric database, does anybody, has anybody ever heard of the geometric database before? It doesn't matter if you haven't, it, it is very key though to how this functions. Now, for those of you who are a bit older, which I don't think any of you are old enough for this, which makes me sick, um, the geometric database is what some would know as the snap tool. Now, if I just find you an image, um, some of you will have come across this snapping tool uh, mesh. Let's try, see if that works. Um, so if I go images, oh, let's go. It's, just, it's nice if you can see it, that's all. Ah, right, now is quite good with it because he still used that grid. That grid, what it actually has is it has key points in between it. Think of it. <laughs> um, think of it to um, like a graph, or yeah, very similar. Now you're, you're right. Now I've just had a point out that it's still available in AutoCAD. It is very true. Now think of then differences between each point being a reference, being a size, being a length. Now, if you think of that, the way that this, this system's referring to it is similar to FEA meshing, where you've got nodes where they can exist. Now, the length of these two sets will be a, a minimum requirement that the, the CAD system can operate to, or we could know it as the geometric database. How much, how small can you make stuff? Now, there is ways of coding um, the geometric database to actually make you stuff that's a nano nanoscale size. When we move into API, that's what I'm going to take you through. How to, because in this case, SolidWorks is, is making us the servant, but when we get to API, we will make SolidWorks our servant by saying, this is what I want it to be. This is the size that you can generate. Now, some of you may have come across this issue before with I mean, everybody's had this issue before when you get zero reference database or zero reference material. What that refers to is you've had two, this is the, I always use two circles. Two circles are quite useful. Let's say the geometric database is 10 mil. And let's say for argument's sake, um, that is our 10 mil, right? Let's say that is the minimum we're allowed to operate in. That's fine and everything. But what do you do with all this space down here? This becomes dead and you're unsure. Now, what the systems do is they don't go like that. Sorry, can't make it. What they'll try to do is they will try to find the best solution that it can. Often, the systems will have a bit of a meltdown and they will panic and they will, they will randomly select the most, most geometry at one spot and the least on the other. And what you end up with actually find the sodding thing there we go what you end up with is a needle surface these now again I put these on here just because I want you guys to, to see it and to see around it now I can imagine some of you will be sat there saying well that's great but how do we solve it you don't there is no there is no black and white do this do that and all will be fine I promise you hugs and kisses none of that None of this is straightforward. So now this is this is the this is the real kicker. So let's what I'll do is I'll delete this, Europe, and then I'll delete this. Now if you remember here, 
I went left. So if I get rid of that this time, remove that and then go right. And go okay. Straight away, and look at that. I've had all these extra surfaces appear. These are all rogue, rogue. Um, these are all rogue surfaces. So what I'll do is I'm going to trim. Come here, come there, and then we're going to go to here, and then I'm going to remove that. And go OK. So we still got, oh my good God. We still got loads. Now look at that. We've got now we've got some that are protruding all the way through. So now what you can do is what you well what you can do is we can start to look at what gives us the best result that we're after. We want a solid flow. We don't want these edges being compromised at all. So what I'll do first is I'm gonna get rid of this base. So I'm gonna get rid of that, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm not going to delete and patch because the delete and patch will get rid of it and give me an even more a better one. So I'm going to delete that completely. Right. So then what I want to do is I want to look at. Yes, it will. But my point is, is that these needle surfaces will still exist. So it means if you move to something like ANSYS to simulate, ANSYS will actually pick up on their needle surfaces. If you move to manufacture with 3D printing, if you move to um, CNC operation, they will still pick up these needle surfaces. Because um, what they'll do is they'll report. Um, well, I, I find I don't anybody who's in, into manufacturing, I find that some of the softwares are so patronising. They'll come back and go, nope, crap, and uh, it, can, it can be very much disheartening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that face out. Now what you see is, oh look at these, oh they're everywhere, they are nasty. Right, so what I now need to know is, I need to know what surface that is and what surface that is. So if I select you and you, what I can see there is that is what I'm targeting. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go delete, come it down to here, and I'm gonna go this. Oh, that is a bummer. Okay, let's go here to here, right click, and let's go delete bodies and points. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to trim out, I'm trying to get rid of all the crap that's on there. So based on the material, on the things I've got here, I've got one to 13, uh, yeah, I've got three to eight. So three to eight, and we have a rogue one there as well. So I'm gonna remove that as well. And then, and then go, oh no, no I'm not, I'm gonna leave that like that. So now what we should have is you and you, and we have this one. Ah. I see the blue line. That's because, ooh, missed another one. I tell you, don't know how I fasten my own shoelaces. So I'm gonna right click, go back, and then tidy that one out as well. So now what I'm in a position of is I have tidied that area up. And again, um, when it comes to your assignment, you come to the end, I will be, I will be skating round for them needle surfaces. And if their needle surfaces are there, you can guarantee you're losing out. These are nasty pains in the backside and they're a real, real, lack of better words, they can really piss you off. So um, what I'll be doing is I will be skating for them, which makes it sound like I'm gonna really drop down like a ton of bricks. In many ways, I will do. So what I'll do is I'm gonna uh, put these into a folder um, because that was me tidying up. So I'm gonna just call that tidy. Tidy. So that's just me tidying up. Really what I should have done is I should have named some more to give me direction of what I was deleting. But um, we're into the flow of this so I just wanna move on a little bit more. So, um, if you have got to the end of this by the way and um, you, um, you've learned all you need to do on this, please start on them guide curves. The guide curves one is amazing, really good. 
and it's one of them tools that I still carry myself like Joel on, on, obviously now if I come back to it uh, we've tidied it up now let's bring it all together let's just let's just knit the surfaces so I'm going to knit you and you merge the entities and I am done perfect just like I want so now what we're going to do is I'm going to do a 25 millimeter uh, radius here and here and a big old 55 which passes right up over the top so I'm going to do a fillet Oh, excuse me 55 bring it up from the middle in fact no no hang on a second let me just bring in I'm gonna go here it's not 55 there it's not 55 there I know but I'm gonna change that to 25 it's just because I when I did this originally I never found that that floor worked very well let me just try I'll fill it and I'm gonna go 55 you see that that's what I was after that flow across it and I found the angles interrupted it quite a bit there we go that's what I was after so if I click OK that's a nice profile there like that that's what I'm after um, so now what I'm after is I'm gonna to go to my top plane and I'm gonna do a plane offset I'm going to do 100 millimeters and confirm. This now is going to uh, create my flute or, or, or the profile that I'm after doing. And I'm going to go. S so I'll just call these, before I do anything, I'll just call these. Um, main body. Fillet uh, Rec Name Body Fillet um, Uh, we'll call this um, flute plan I'm going to come onto here and I'll sketch and sketch control and eight and this profile now is dead easy so I'm just going to go center line coming from um, the uh, datum itself bring that all the way down and just stick it it doesn't really matter all this is just to give me symmetry so I'm going to go a corner rectangle, bring that across, and I'm going to go, I'm going to use my little technique that I was doing earlier. So I'm going to go um, vertical to vertical to vertical, and to make that symmetrical. Oh, that way, have I clicked that in somewhere? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now, um, there to there gives that. 27.5 and then my height being 65 whoops 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 come back to here that's better so height on 65 um, nib to top of 70 and then just a radius Fill it on there, 12.5. Fill there, 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 and there. And click OK. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude that with a draft of 5 degrees. So I'm going to go extrude. And I'm going to do a draft of 5 degrees. And what I'll do in this case, did I tell you to go up? So what did I tell you to go? And I'm going to draft outwards, and I'm going to flip that direction, and I'm just going to go up to up to body there. Oh, not that. So 
I'm going to go up to surface. Not what I was after. That's better. And if I flip that over, we can see there. It's just what I'm essentially doing is recreating what the uh, simple lofting was. So I click on that, okay. Now there's a few ways with this. What we're going to do on here is we're going to do something that you've probably never done before, which is face fill it. Um, what I'll do is I want to trim these, trim these out first. So I'm going to trim. I use a standard because it's very dead straightforward what we've done. What sections to remove? I'm going to remove that section and then click OK. So now what we get is that hole between it, which is nice. And uh, I'm going to just call that flute, flute body. Flute body. And um, flute trim. So you and you and you stick these into. I like to try and put all my main body elements into folder types. Let's call that flute. And at least then it's something I can um, uh, come back to, or I can actually isolate this into one piece. And this is a really use of using bodies, uh, using folders like that. Uh, they're really useful for things like that. So I'm going to go fill it, and then from here now, flip it round. Now you you've probably never some of you will have met surfaces before, uh, uh, face fillets before. They're a little bit odd, so I'm going to choose on here. And what it tries to do is what I'm saying is my pull direction is here, and what I want to do is pull this way as well. And it's in essence it's trying to pull the edging into that fillet. So if I click there and then click on there. What you see there is the pull directions going the wrong direction. So if I flip that up, and then what was the size? Uh, 12.5. So if I go 12, whoops, 12.5. What you see now is it pulls it up, and it says wherever these two are connected in that way, it will try to create the fillet between it. And granted, if we did a knit between them two, we could use a continuous. However, you're not always going to be in a position where you can use continu continuous. You may need to use a knit to create, you may need to use a fillet to create that all important knit between them. Because if I confirm that now, what you'll notice is that the entities are now gone. Basically, it's not blue. The entities are now merged. So this allows me to almost bypass the process of that fillet. So I'll just call that um, flute fillet. Bang it in that folder, just because it's all then in there. Right, so what I'll do now is save it. And then we need to take it to that final step. So I'm just going to go with the Lofting. And then what I'm going to do is, what was our thickness? Five millimeter thickness. So I'm going to go thickness. Where is my thicken? There it is. So I'm going to go thicken, thicken that. I'm not going to go 10. Now you'll notice, I, I just want to heighten you on this. Now you see how these flows are between. These flows are nice, these are ideal. However, the more complicated the geometry you get, where these corners are, you'll get them um, intersecting with each other. This will stop you from being able to um, thicken a component. Now you notice down here, our, problem, our problematic corner is nicely tidied up all the crap has gone away and um, we're now in a nice steady state so if I thicken that please thicken there we go <laughs> so if I thicken that and now if I can just drop that out that is our advanced profile and we've now got the intersection between the two we can control everything about that we can control the flow between your corner rectangle through to your circle we can control the direction of the flat plane 
um, the flat net direction where you can control the flute the, f the actual draft between it the fillets there is nothing on that that we don't have actual control over this is where you when you leave if you move into surfacing this is where the big bucks come from because you can control everything about it one thing that you should be clear of about this is that it's actually nothing to do with your ability of being able to use CAD hitting extrude and cutting until it looks right this is actually nothing to do with the surface that's on it in fact the surface when it comes to the surface we've got to tidy up behind the surface to make it blooming work right what this is about is good sketches and being vigilant about what the systems can and cannot do if I spin this round this problem down here with the uh, needle surfaces um, I will be addressing this tomorrow in Inventor um, you're going to be for those of you who are key with both you'll be very surprised with um, Inventor's approach with this Inventor is quite good and this is where I think Autodesk moves into its strengths when it comes to curves however tool, tool processes smart reactions quick ways uh, for me so for me personally me personally so far I find the salt holds them uh, quicker responses better but this is what it's about this is not just cat anymore it's about you deciding what you think works well for you Ah, good question, good question. Um, that's, a, that's a really good question. So I just want to read that out. Uh, how come the surfaces have been, uh, how come the surfaces uh, have been closed off when, when it's been thickened? Don't we have to uh, create a planar surface to, to the open edges? Good question, right. So these are the two different methods of approach. So two seconds, let me just open up the um, basic one because I, I've just, with you asking that, it's just made me realize that I didn't really talk about that, which again is really important. So if we consider this, this is a closed surface. For us, it, for, all, for all argument's sake, this is a solid component, but at the moment we left it in a surface, but it's a solid component. Then what we could do is choose whether to do a carbon or whatever we wanted to do. However, what if your problem arises where you're approaching the problem and it's needing to be a component like a manifold or like a bonnet or a door and you're never really going to have that distance now the thing i should point out which um i think relates to this question really well to be honest is thickening is the example of if you were going to make this component from a solid base material so let's say we're going to make this from steel this would be perfect for that however if we were going to use this and we were going to make something out of fiberglass carbon what we would actually do is not use the thickened part but use the thin part the surface part I should say pass that into our simulation tool we can look at that and then generate a mold because the beauty is with this is let's say we wanted to make a mold from that we can surround this with a, a geometry and then we can actually turn this into a negative and then instantly make that mold straight away so with this that's why um, you're in them in them states if you will so on your assignment some of you are going to be thrown with um, making parts this way some of you are going to be thrown with making parts this way um, I've, I've, as, as I said as I've been saying I, I've changed the assignment and um, I'm hoping that it's going to be a bit of a challenge and a bit of a um, well it's an assignment so it's difficult <laughs> but that's what we're looking at so these are two ways to have this recommended so uh, motorsports last year for example when I asked them to do the uh, formula student car they had to produce it this way so they produced the bodywork and then they thickened the parts however 
as um, we know from this point here thickening will not always do the job correctly thicken I mean the surfaces will not always do the part job correctly um, what you've got to be do is vigilant be very vigilant about what you're making try to think about um, when you're trimming something what it's trimming and I'm not saying I want you to go into the sodding theory and knock down the equations behind it what I'm actually asking you to do is just use your common sense when it comes to that ability of being able to trim these points back based on the geometric database anything that's with uh, in that geometric database so if it's a big piece it will be fine however if you've got very minute changes so again what we did here is we created two flaws from the same point and it's them that tend to be the sneaky devils that really kick your ass a lot interestingly if we did this as a solid from the start we probably wouldn't actually get these issues when it's volumetric area it's it's got that little bit extra to deal with when it surfaces it doesn't so this resides on your professionalism of looking out for these these key elements and key problems that emerge right so is there any more questions on the advanced lofting Just check on the feed. Variable thicken. It's a good question. So um, with variable thicken, it's a tricky one. Is variable thicken? So uh, you. So if I extend on here, you don't have much option with variable thicken. The best answer I could give you is if I shift it back to there and then let's have a look before that fillet. Now these at this point are two separates. I can thicken these two differently. Um, if you wanted to have a variable thickness within it one thing that you could do is go back to the original question that was just asked what you could do is close all this off and you would have to uh, variable shell that now um, this is where that, that, that thickened tool becomes quite limited um, this isn't a desalt thing this is quite common across most big CAD companies there's no straight make it this way or that way for a thickened tool uh, as I said, with shelling, there's a lot more key options within it. It would, it would. I've had a, I've had a question. Um, the question is, uh, if you are. If you are to thicken a surface, would it not be the same as shelling uh, a solid? For the end, for the end part, yes. However, when it comes to a solid, a solid cannot do that. I can't jump, and I don't have free control at all. So um, again, surfacing, uh, surfacing is far superior in all outright when it comes to um, advanced profiles like this. Uh, when it comes to thicken, your point of shelling this, you've got to think, right? So if I if I went like that, if I wanted to thicken this, what I would need to do is close these key points here and here and here, perhaps put a planar surface on the bottom, planar surface on there, planar surface on there, <laughs> planar surface on there, then knit it all together, form a solid and then shell it. So that's what, one, two, three, four, five, and six profiles, seven if you count the knitting. So that's seven profiles as opposed to my one. So th that's a key reason why thicken is used in that method, where it can you can easily go from your key point to geometry and then just thicken to your part of what you're doing. But you must be vigilant as to what it is that you're making how much you're making of it, what it is that you're modeling. If you're modeling an entire key profile, I would expect you to, so if you were modeling an entire car, I will be taking you all through some of the past submissions from cars, past submissions from aircraft, 
Um, we had some phenomenal work last year from uh, a run show direct entrant guy who did, um, um, well, I actually, <laughs> I actually had the DeLorean from Back to the Future. I had a 65 Mustang. I had um, a Mitsubishi Evo, uh, Evo 10. I had, I had all sorts of vehicles last year and some of the work, you've got to see it to believe it, some of the work is phenomenal, but I really don't want to go through them just yet, just because it can be quite intimidating at first to look at them. So I, I just wanna move through these key um, 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 elements of the actual uh, designs that we're doing. Right, I'm gonna upload these two teams so then you have what I've been doing just now so everything's up to date with that um, let me just save that because I'm going to upload this to teams and what I'll be doing in a minute is going on mute uh, and switch my camera just off I am going to leave myself on on here and I am now going to leave it open for uh, consultation of development so anything that you've been doing Anything that you've been struggling with, I can help you with it, and um, we can get that get that sorted. So message me on Teams, or message me through the chat, or just ask me outright, and I don't mind at all. Um, I'm just going to stop the recording because that's all I wanted to do as far as these notes go.